History is full of interesting lessons for those of us that are paying attention. They say that ignorance is bliss and hindsight is 2020. Hindsight bias, also known as knew it all along effect or creeping determinism, is a documented psychological phenomenon in which people exaggerate the predictability of an event after it has already occurred. Monday morning quarterbacks always seem to know better. They always know what they should have done after history has been written and the page has already been turned. On a long enough timeline, we are all bound to find certain cycles and repetitions in life that are almost entirely predictable. Anyone looking back on their lives can most definitely find moments where they wish they would have acted differently in a given situation. If you only knew then what you know now, you most certainly would have acted differently than you did then, wouldn't you? And if you only knew then what you know now, you might have changed the future to better suit your needs and desires, protect your interests, and mitigate risk, wouldn't you? Our ancestors did not have the collective knowledge that we have now. There were no smartphones with wireless hotspot internet. There were no gigantic knowledge databases compiled for their benefit. Things that were learned in the past were learned the hard way. Ideas, skills, tricks, lessons, tips, and technology didn't necessarily spread to more people than your immediate community. It could take years or decades or centuries for the necessary skills like farming techniques or forging steel, curing diseases, or anything worthwhile to spread to the rest of humanity. Our knowledge database was collectively small and short-lived. This is the Chao Tse, the world's first paper currency. Around the 10th century AD in China, during the Song Dynasty, the first paper currency experiment ended with inflation and failure. Even though the Chao Tse was technically backed by gold, silver, and silk, conversion was actually never allowed. Yuan Dynasty banknotes were also one of the earliest fiat currencies to exist and meet the same fate. Here is one of the printing plates used to make these notes. Other fiat paper currencies were tried in China and ultimately failed as well, following massive printing and hyperinflation. It was not until the Ming Dynasty that paper fiat currency was finally outlawed to prevent these situations from happening again. Today, all national currencies of the world use fiat. Fiat is a Latin word that means let it be done. In essence, it's just some man saying it so. It requires nothing but faith for fiat currency to exist. The moment people no longer believe in its worth, it fails to function any longer. It has no intrinsic value. Fugazi is a word that reminds me of fiat. It means fake, something that has no substance. Synonyms to counterfeit, bogus, fake, false, forged, inauthentic, phony. I fail to see the difference in meaning between fiat, fugazi, or counterfeit in these contexts. The only thing separating them is that people actually value fiat currency in mass until they do not. So historically, what gave the pieces of paper our ancestors carried any actual value? Why would anybody want them? What gave them the value that separates them from today's fiat? Our money generally used to be backed by actual silver and gold. The paper was merely a receipt for that silver and gold. Instead of carrying heavy coins of gold and silver with you, these receipts were often exchanged in their place. This bill might look more familiar to you than some of the others. But there are some major differences. These are silver certificates. At any point, you can go to the bank and exchange this note for the actual metal that backed the note. It gave people confidence in the paper that in turn gave these notes actual value. As crazy as some of these bills might look to us now, they were fully convertible back to gold or silver up until 1971. For the generations that were born after Nixon closed the gold window, they will only remember money as the bills we are used to seeing in circulation. They don't teach you about sound money in school. They don't teach you where it comes from, what makes it valuable, or that America had two failed fiat currencies in the past. They don't teach about fractional reserve lending and how banks create fiat currency out of thin air. By keeping people ill-informed and ignorant about how our money used to work, it keeps us from finding out that the paper we work so hard for 
is merely an official counterfeit of real money. Can you imagine carrying around $100 worth of silver 100 years ago? If this doesn't wake you up, then nothing will. The central banks of the world have been perpetrating a massive fraud on all of us worldwide. Since 1913 in America, international bankers have been operating under the name Federal Reserve, which is not a federal institution and has no reserves. They are only middlemen who force us to essentially rent our fiat currency from them. They produce nothing of value and have commandeered the political process. Our money has been virtually destroyed, having lost over 95% of its original purchasing power in the last 100 years, as I have clearly demonstrated. Booms and bust cycles are not accidents. They are manufactured deliberately by design. Bubbles and depressions are not mysterious anomalies. Our founding fathers warned us. Thomas Jefferson told us this could happen, but we did not listen. And after Andrew Jackson had famously killed the central bank of his day, the bank tried to kill him back. He miraculously survived an attempt on his life only to have his face adorn the fiat $20 bill of today. So these bankers have been fattening us up with debt and then shearing us of profit for a goddamn century. And when they are unable to squeeze another dollar, siphon another drop of blood, or extract one more day of slavery out of us, it all implodes. These are the facts. This system will be 100 years old in 2013. We will celebrate 100 years of deceit, fraud, and manipulation. 100 fucking years. Fortunately, there is a flaw in this design. All fiat currencies end with the destruction of the note, at which point we might free ourselves from debt slavery. Are you going to be ready for this mathematical certainty? It is coming to all corners of the world, because when the petrodollar, the reserve currency of the world goes, it's going to take down all other fiat currencies with it. So if all of your wealth is measured in paper dollars and is sitting in the bank collecting 0.01% bullshit interest, or in stocks, or bonds, or securities, you might want to think twice. Because when this system goes down, it's going down for good. It cannot and will not survive forever.